What's the my single chance? Today it is Judgment Day. After all the rumors, after all the heat, will will it be true? Because listen, the rumors are flying around that Xbox games are gonna come on PlayStation. If that happens, bro, it is over. If <laughs> if it doesn't, if the rumors turn out to be fake, the Xbox Andes are gonna murder Sony ponies. Leave a like, boys. Leave a like. And let's check out what's happening. Okay, let's get into it. Phil Spencer, any moment now. There Hello, we are. Hello, and welcome to the official Xbox podcast. I'm yeah. your host, Tina Amini, and we have a very special episode today, as you can probably tell by the fact that I'm joined by Phil, Sarah, and Matt. Welcome. And we're going to talk about some updates at Xbox. We want to talk about game exclusivity. We want to talk about Activision Blizzard now that yeah. they're part of our portfolio, how that might be an impact on Game Pass. And we want to talk about hardware, too, and how all of this fits into the strategy at sure. Xbox. So where should we start, Phil? Yeah. Well, are the games coming on PlayStation or not? Because a lot of Xbox fanboys this last week had a massive meltdown, right? 38-year-old, a father of five, five kids, started crying over on camera. Uh, but... I, I believe that it's gonna be a I, I feel like that rumors are true somewhat but I'm not expecting like all the Xbox games coming on PlayStation right you know what I mean but don't you dare Phil don't you dare yeah that's what the homie Matthew said let's see man if the rumors are true bro holy crap if the rumors are false the Xbox Andy is gonna murder Sony ponies though I'm overall I'm, I'm hyped for the drama when we originally had planned for the show starting what back in December um, I think we probably would have started with Activision Blizzard, okay. maybe talked a little bit about the exclusivity with some of the news coming up and then hardware. But we've we've had some unforeseen news that has come out. So let's just go and, and tackle the exclusivity question because I know it's on the minds of a lot of people. We hear from the community and that's an important input for us. So we made the decision that we're gonna take four games to the other consoles, um, just four games not a change to our kind of fundamental exclusive strategy. Uh, it is, we're making these decisions for some specific reasons. Um, we make every decision really with the long-term health of Xbox in mind. Um, and long-term health of Xbox means a growing platform, our games performing, yeah. building games? the best platform for creators, um, reaching as many players as we can. We're always looking to learn as a leadership team mm. um, and to grow. And we think this is an interesting... Yeah, uh, like I said before, like if they do bring their games on PlayStation, they're going to make a lot of revenue. They're going to... Uh, this is going to be a W move for gamers, all the gamers, uh, normal PlayStation fans, normal Xbox fans. I'm not talking about the a Xbox Andes or the PlayStation fanboys, the Sony ponies. This is going to be a big... Uh, they're gonna make a lot of profit, uh, okay? But if they decide to ditch their exclusives, then they're gonna kill the reason to own on Xbox, though, let's be real. Point in time for us to use what some of the other platforms have right now um, to help grow our franchises, so we're gonna do that. So these four titles, what are they? Can, they, can you say? I'm not gonna name those games. The teams that are building those games have announced plans that are not too far away. As we know, game teams put a lot of energy into their announcements with the partners. So um, I don't wanna take anything away from those teams. Um, so I won't be talking about the titles specifically, <laughs> but I, I think when they come out, um, it'll make sense. Can we yeah! <laughs> Man, turn off the music. Oh, got you, brother. Got you. Uh, we're gonna put some happy music then instead, okay? Uh, by four games. Yo, 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 yo. What? Well, take a guess in the chat, okay? We say if either of those titles are Starfield or Indiana Jones. They are not Starfield or Indiana Jones. Well. Oh shit! What? What? Okay, well, you know, the Xbox Andes were saying that not Starfield, bro. We don't want Starfield Indiana Jones on the PlayStation. We don't want it. We don't want it. And PlayStation fanboys were like, I want to play some of them. And some of them were saying that Starfield is trash. I don't want it. So, holy crap. What was the criteria in how the team was thinking about selecting those four titles? Let me start a little bit outside of that, and then I'll get to the four specific games that we're talking about right now. Because okay. the, the fundamental decision driver for any decision that we make, anything we're going to talk about today, is the long-term health of Xbox. That we're running a growing platform that is reaching more players, that our games are having as much success as possible, and I do have a fundamental belief that over the next five or 10 years, exclusive games, games that are exclusive to one piece of hardware, 
are gonna be a smaller and smaller part of the game industry. And that's not some great insight, because if you look at the last 10 years... Yo, what are the odds we're ever gonna see, like, let's just say Spider-Man come out on Xbox? Like, listen, I play on PlayStation, as a fan of PlayStation, I, I, I wouldn't mind if other people get to play, though. You know what I mean? But obviously, let's be real, though. Exclusives do sell consoles. Uh, and, and I feel like that it's going to be a beautiful thing. Like, if there are no exclusives and everybody can play every game. I mean, for gamers overall, for everybody, that's going to be a good thing, right? But make no mistake, like, exclusives do sell platforms. And for PlayStation, I, I don't... I mean, I feel like that if they ever going to decide to, let's just say, bring their first-party titles like uh, Spider-Man, God of War, it's probably not going to be day one. It's probably going to be, like you know, maybe a year later or something. Uh, whatever they decide to do, I mean, it's their company, they do them, uh, they were gonna do, uh, they're gonna do them, right? But I mean, listen, five years, 10 years from now, nobody knows how this second is gonna play out, right? They might do it where it's like day one, you know, everybody gets to play it, or they might not do it, right? Because listen, man, whatever you say right now, you do not know whether that's gonna turn out to be true like five, 10 years from now, Switch uh, would die if it had no exclusives. In a way, I feel like that, let, let's be real, right? Like if you can play all the Xbox games, games on PlayStation, then there's no reason to buy Xbox. If you can uh, play all the PlayStation games on Xbox, then it's gonna be coming down to whether you're Xbox fan or PlayStation. If, for example, Xbox and PlayStation both give up their exclusive games, then it's gonna be all about, hey man, what platform you like, what platform feature sounds good to you, what your friends are playing on, even though we got crossplay, so that 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 thing doesn't really matter that much either. But it's gonna be like, hey, whatever you like at that point, right? You're just gonna buy PlayStation or Xbox depending on what you like, and I think that's fine though, you know? Uh, and, and I'll go with PlayStation because I'm used to it. If you're used to Xbox, you're gonna go with Xbox. Simple as that, right? But if the features, but if they bring in the, the fact that, you know, Xbox Online is free, oh hell yeah, I'm getting an Xbox though. You feel what I'm saying? and what the biggest games are today, it's a natural place. Whether it's one console and PC, multiple consoles, mobile console and PC, you see big games landing on multiple platforms, and we want to be a great platform for creators that are trying to realize that potential. But now back to the specifics of the question on these four, four specific titles. We looked at games that are over a year old, so they've been on Xbox and PC for a while, uh, a couple of the games are community-driven games, new uh -huh. games that kind of first iterations of a franchise. Okay, I'm assuming Hi-Fi Rush, actually. That have reached their full potential, I'd say, on Xbox and PC. There's always growth. Franchises that we obviously want to continue to invest in. Parting, part of having the ability to continue to invest is that the businesses behind those franchises continue. Um, we think it's important that these service-based games that have communities behind them, that they can have confidence that they're going to exist in the future. Right. So two of them, kind of community-driven games that will end up on other platforms and give us the ability to continue to invest in them. We think that's great for the business and great for the community. I'm, I'm t genuinely expecting like Hi-Fi Rush to come out on PlayStation. Uh, but he said like, okay, Starfield and Indiana Jones not coming. So I, I guess like the... Yeah, man, I, I think the Xbox Andes can relax. Like when the rumors were, were coming out last, last week, man, so many people lost their shit, right? They panicked for no dang reason. I think they are gonna be, they're, they're gonna feel all right. Maybe they're gonna bring Redfield. Yeah, Redfield can definitely come out on PlayStation because nobody's really playing that game. Uh, they flop massively with that, so they might actually bring it in. Uh, what games, what four games do you think? I definitely think Hi-Fi, right? I could do, surely, surely be wrong. He did not say no Halo. He said no Starfield and no Indiana Jones. Halo it can be on PlayStation. Uh, but he says four games are coming on PlayStation. It's more players to play with. Technically, he said four, uh, four games are coming on other consoles. So I'm assuming Nintendo and PlayStation. That's what he said. So. I'd say two of the other games are smaller games that were never really meant to be built as kind of platform exclusives and all the fanfare that goes around that. But games that our teams really wanted to go build, that we love supporting creative endeavors across our studios, regardless of size. And as they've realized their full potential on Xbox and PC, we see an opportunity to utilize the it's other platforms okay, gotcha. as a place to just drive more business value out of those games. Uh, you guys, okay, listen, I'm sure this is gonna be a big thing on the internet. Maybe it already is, uh, and I'm sure so this thought probably 
is crossing your mind right now or might have crossed before so uh what do you guys think do you think phil is lying here phil is capping do you think he's backtracking because last week we had rumors that yup mostly all the games are gonna come but then we also had rumors just like few days before that half of the rumor is true and starfield is not gonna be on xbox uh, or on playstation i should say so uh, my bad uh not gonna be on playstation uh, uh, and that rumor came from the same guy that initially said that, yeah, uh, all the games are gonna be coming on PlayStation, right? So he kind of backtracked as well. Maybe he heard the updated news, or maybe maybe they were really thinking about bringing all of them, but they saw the fans, Xbox fanboys' response, and they're like, holy shit, man, holy shit! You know, fanboys kind of making sense a little bit. Uh, we should not do it. We're gonna kill Xbox if we do it, right? And this is why maybe they're backtracking, or, 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 this was always, always their plan to bring some games, not all. Realistically, I believe that, you know what, they were not looking to bring their exclusive, all their exclusive day one on PlayStation. Because it just, you know, you feel what I'm saying, that's like, you are literally gonna kill Xbox, or the reason to buy Xbox, right? They, Microsoft, don't get me wrong, they have that, they have that F you money, they, they can lose a ton of money and still be fine. But I don't think they're stupid. Like, every corporation, at the end of the day, they want to make their money back. In fact, they want to make ten times the money back, right? So I never really thought that they're ever gonna bring, like, let's just say day one, right? Obviously, that was a rumor. I was covering the news. We were joking around, and we were like, yeah, yeah, why? You know, it was all dooms, doomsday kind of situation, and uh, people were losing their shit, but, like kind of realistically makes sense that they're not gonna bring their exclusives day one though but they're bringing four of the games he's, he's still keeping it a mystery can be halo but he never he never said no halo and he never bring in uh, halo brought in halo so uh it it's a maybe that halo is gonna come in games allowing maybe, us maybe, maybe to invest in maybe future iterations of those, so sequels to them. Why do you keep saying GTA 6? I never said GTA 6, but I think you mean, yeah, Torday has been talking about GTA 6. Uh, GTA 6 is not gonna be a console. It's coming on both PlayStation and Xbox. Uh, he's hyped for GTA 6. That's probably why he's saying that I'm hyped for GTA 6 too. Those, or just other games like that in our portfolio. And when we don't damage Xbox and we can grow our business using what other platforms have and to, to help us with that, we're gonna do that and and that's really the story yeah. behind these four games yeah they don't want to damage see like i i think either they backtracked or uh the, the rumor was uh i mean semi true not fully false i guess uh either semi uh, rumor a uh, rumor was semi false semi true or or uh, he backtracked though but okay i mean he don't want to damage x but well uh fair play right there papa uncle uh, <laughs> uncle Phil. so now last thing i'll say looking forward you know i, I think there are there is an interesting story for us of introducing Xbox franchises to players on other platforms to get them more interested in Xbox. We think we there's a, a good brand value for Xbox there. So Dang. four games, no promise beyond that. So if you're on those other platforms and you see these four games coming, please don't take it as some signal that everything's coming. It's not. Um, and we're gonna- yeah, he read the rumors. He read that. I mean, in a way, I kind of appreciate him clearing things up, but like, is it the truth? Like, let's be real. At the end of the day, guys, like, there's no need to suck Uncle <laughs> Uncle Phil Johnson. There's no reason to suck like any of the corporations, whether it's be like Jim Lyon crying, frying Ryan. Uh, like, these corporations lie. Uh, they, they will kind of need to lie. They don't care about you. They, you, uh, they view you and me, all of us, as dollars. Uh, dollar signs understandably i mean it's a corporation big shocker they don't care about us right so i mean not everything is always going to be set in stone maybe like two years from now they feel like that they gotta apply a different strategy that will make them money 100 percent, they're gonna apply that strategy like it goes the same way for sony as well it's all about the money at the end of the day money talks bullshit bullshit walk so don't believe 100 percent what phil says but for now i think what he's saying is true uh but don't be shocked if that changes like six months from now or in the near future, right? Learn. So when you are thinking about the future and this concept of live service games, games that can benefit from bigger audiences, new audiences, how does that apply to future titles and how you're applying that criteria there? Yeah, there's really no fundamental change to how we think about exclusivity. We just came out of Developer Direct, which mm -hmm. was an awesome show, um, where we showed great games that are coming to Xbox and PC and cloud, which really makes them accessible to mm -hmm. you know hundreds of millions of people. So it's this kind of, you know, we're, we're really focused on a couple platforms and what's going to show up there. Um, but our, uh -huh. our 
key of play the games you want with the people you want anywhere you want when yeah. anybody play when everybody plays we all win these have yeah. been part of our strategy for years and will continue to be our focus is on how do we continue to grow the games industry by reaching more players in more places and how do we grow xbox as part of that Xbox is a hardware platform. Xbox is a publisher of great games, and Xbox great games. I mean, stop the cap. Stop the cap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll, I'll let the chat decide. Okay, one if you think Xbox has good games, two if you think they don't. I mean, uh, other like, let's be real, man. Like outside of Microsoft Simulator, Game Pass, Game Pass. Listen, man, it's a good deal for gamers. I, as somebody that does not have Game Pass. If I find like one solid game on it, I will get it, right? But my I, I feel like is Microsoft Flight Simulator on Game Pass? I'm not sure. But I bought Microsoft Flight Simulator on PC. It's a masterpiece. Microsoft Flight Simulator matter masterpiece. I cannot say about uh, Forza. I cannot give you my opinion on Forza because I never played it. But from what everybody has been saying and from what I've seen on the internet, looks like a masterpiece, right? Forza, Microsoft Flight Simulator, Game Pass. Other than that, bro, like great games come on now phil come on now man redfall great game starfield red phil uh starfield great game come on now man stop capping phil like come on bro as a platform for the world's best creators mm -hmm. and then knowing that how do we two, think two, about two. our first party games and game pass yeah well to build on uh, uh this is coming from matt Boute. what phil just said one thing i would add when I mean, you were talking about growth it's yeah. just that uh, we've sort of seen this inversion over the last five years where it used to be that the platform was the biggest thing. That's right. And the games would sort of tuck in within the platform. Today, big games like a Roblox or a Fortnite could actually be bigger than any one platform. Yeah, and uh, that really has changed the way that we think about things. So in the midst of all that, I think we at First Party can come back to sort of some core principles. First, that all of our games will be on the Xbox platform. Second, all of our games will go into Game Pass on day one. And third, we know that Game Pass will only be available on Xbox. So there's sort of starting point. Yeah. Oh, okay, so no Game Pass on PlayStation. Gotcha right there. Okay, got got it, man. Mad Burn. <laughs> uh, all Xbox games are available on PC. Most of them are mid with uh, 80. Uh, I believe you mean Metascore or something like uh, below 85. Uh, Metacritic. I would say yo, 85 honestly is a very good score. But let's be real. Most people rate games based on feelings and not objectiveness, right? You, you know what I mean? Subjectively, you can give any game 10 out of 10 if you like it, right? But like, there are very few people which you can give 10 out of 10. But most people, they're like, yeah, game sucks, but I'll give it 85 though. I mean, like, what are we talking about? Is it me or you guys feel the same way? It's like, nowadays, if a game sucks, it has 7 out of 10. Why does it have 7 out of 10 if the game sucks? If the game sucks, it should have a 3. If a game is all right, an average, it should get like five because five is average. Five is not a death uh, sentence. For example, like Starfield, initially I saw that I gave it six, but the more I see it, I'm like, that game was like definitely a four or five. It's like average, below average kind of ish, okay? The Starfield is not a 10 out of 10. It's also not a one out of 10. But suckers are like, yeah, bro, game sucks. Seven out of 10. Come on, man. Points for us. Um, as Phil mentioned, Agree, disagree. there are games today that you can play that only can be found on Xbox. And at Five the same average, time, agreed. we want to bring more of our games to more players. So we're going to continue to look at that. Kind of moving aside, though, from oh, some of shit. those and thinking more about what does it really mean for the player. To me, the two key things are cross-play and cross-save. Um, mm. Those things allow us to deliver on the promise of Xbox, which is play with your friends where they are, play on the devices you want, play the game. The promise of Xbox. Games you want. So that is really only possible at a practical level when you know that your saves and your player are gonna be able to move across all those parts. Um, so not all of our games today are necessarily built to take advantage of that. There still will be some games that don't. Uh, uh, Skizzle, we're gonna admit PS5 is just a third party box. 
Uh, man, they're milking the shines. Why don't they just drop the game? Well, they're not gonna tell us the names yet. Or maybe, the, I mean, he hinted, but we're gonna find out, guys. Love y'all for 200 likes on the on the stream. Love y'all, man. Let me send you some kishish. Uh, we have been spoiled with stellar games like uh, Baldur's Gate 3, The Last of Us, uh, Spider-Man 2, Elden Ring, God of War, Horizon, and so many more that anything mid sucks now. And I, I feel you on that, right? Because for me right now, like, Ever since seeing the GTA 6 trailer, I'm like, holy shit, man, no game kind of hits the same no more. But a Baldur's Gate 3, I heard nothing but good things about it. I mean, it became game of the year for a reason, right? Like, duh. I never I never played Baldur's Gate 3. I, I don't think I'm the target audience, and that's, like, perfectly all right, because not every game is going to hit everybody, and that's fine, right? Uh, yeah, but it's like, holy shit, man. Like, a lot of people love it. And when a lot of people love it, it's there is definitely something good happening behind the Scene. so it, uh, and the fact that you're also bringing it up so probably is a good game right i heard nothing but good things about uh, baldur's gate 3 actually uh but yeah like we, we got the homie no one said that baldi's gate 3 uh obviously memeing around but uh, yeah i mean listen not everybody's gonna love it and that's fine but it's like we dog like we get nowadays we get very few games like think about this for a second right guys we're more than halfway through the playstation and xbox life cycle think about it what games we got yes yeah, spider-man horizon god of war you can say and these games are good right like i'm a massive god of war fan i loved it right horizon i'm not necessarily a fan but but the game i watched the gameplay look good not for me whatever but you liked it a lot of people loved it that's brilliant okay spider-man 2 amazing game outside of the woke bullcrap but amazing game right phenomenal game like damn like the the the, the, the like damn the single player game right it's a single player game and you know not gonna spoil but it's like when venom becomes the thing that it does it's like the entire city transforms and it looks completely different it's like i never thought that i'll see a game look that different it, it becomes a new game altogether and I see the work that they put in and it shows why they spend millions and millions of dollars on making that. M might not be sustainable. I don't think it's sustainable for the long run because they spent so much money on that game making that. But if you play Spider-Man 2, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like the game starts in one way where the city is looking clean, looking decent. But then like when Venom takes over, it's like, holy shit, the game looks so different. But the point here is this, that... In comparison to the PS3 and PS4 era, dog, both for PlayStation and Xbox, like, we don't have that many games, though. Like, holy shit, like, it feels so dry. I mean, we have good games, don't get me wrong, but in comparison, because I grew up playing PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3, and I lived through the Xbox 360 era as well, and we were getting bangers after bangers after bangers. Like, in a year, we would have so many good first-party titles, so many third-party titles, and right now, it feels very, very lame and slow-ish. One, if you feel the same way. Two, if you feel uh, if you don't agree with me, uh, that's fine. Uh, I I'm not saying gaming is dying. Gaming is far from dying. Gaming, if you say gaming is dying, it could be the truth for you, subjectively, but objectively, gaming is not dying gaming is making the most amount of money it's up it's the big it's one of the biggest industry on the planet it's not dying but it is slowing down in my opinion not financially they're making more money because of microtransactions but in terms of like games quality and good games it's slow you you feel what i'm saying right like we're getting very few good games we're getting a lot of games but very few good games. Uh, gaming is dead, gaming died a long time ago. Subjectively, yeah, but objectively, nah, man, they're making a lot of money. Uh, gaming is like on top right now, it's on the peak, uh, but subjectively, I, 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 I mean, I see where you're coming from. Um, as we bring more teams into the Xbox family, there's some catch up to do as we get there, but that cross play, cross save, is like so fundamental to what there's been like less than two games made only for series x and ps5 i can think of like ratchet and clank and spider-man 2 for uh playstation is but no spider-man 2 is not on playstation 4 exactly and if you're somebody that's like has ps4 dog or xbox one uh but bro, like, if you did not buy PlayStation 5, I don't blame you. If you did not buy Series X, I don't blame you. Like, you, to be honest, you don't need a PlayStation 5 right now or Series X. Uh, obviously, it's good to have, don't get me wrong, eventually. You would need, when, when GTA 6 comes out, you would need a PS5 or Series X. Because it's not coming out on last gen, it's not coming out on PC. So, in that aspect, yeah. But other than that, like, damn, like, you, you know what I mean, right? what we're doing and I think is uh, something that we as first party get such a good benefit from being so close to the platform. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's one of the things, like you said, 
all of our games are always in Game Pass. And so I'm excited to announce, you know, with the coming together that we had with Activision Blizzard King, that Activision and Blizzard games are coming to Game Pass starting with Diablo 4 on March 28th, which I'm super, super excited to yeah, share. Yeah, okay, all Activision games, right? If that's the case, then Call of Duty Day 1! Call of Duty Day 1! Yo, that would be insane though. Like, listen, man, I, I gotta still say that you can dis still, still say this. You can disagree, which is fine, which is fair. But uh, And I'm saying this as somebody that does not have Game Pass, so take it for what it's worth, right? Opinion <laughs> in the toilet right Bruh. there. I don't have Game Pass, but, 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 I view the deal and it's a beautiful deal, man. It's a very, very good deal. Maybe it's not sustainable for them. Maybe it is. That's like a different topic, different debate altogether. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, Super Steve says that gaming isn't dying. It's being catered to a new audience. We are no longer the target audience. Agreed. Like a lot of the new cats on the blog, they feel like they're buying microtransactions is perfectly fine. You know, it is normal. But I mean, ask that to us, man. We'll tell you. Go pound sand, man. Get more, man. Because we come from an era where, <laughs> I mean, in the internet days, it's like we came from a dinosaur era, right? Like, but in our days, we didn't have that many microtransactions, man. There today. And it's all part of our commitment to make Xbox, the Xbox experience, and the games that we build as widely available as possible. So now the 34 million Game Pass members can all enjoy the 34? fantastic experience of Diablo 4. Amazing. Dang. Can we come back to the point, Phil, you mentioned at the top, this isn't really a change in strategy for us. Can you recap for me how it isn't? Yeah, uh, capping like uh, how the kid says nowadays or like actual recap? I know she said recap, but like, <laughs> you know, recapping, guys. Bruh. And I, I thought... Both Matt and Sarah did a really nice job of talking about what we're doing on Xbox, mm -hmm. where where we're going. You know, if you if you take a platform feature like Xbox Play Anywhere, which what? has been a promise that we've made on our first party games that you can buy our game once, you're going to get play across Xbox and Windows. I think we're the only platform that mm -hmm. does this um, mm. that makes it possible for you not only to play with yep. your friends wherever they are. But to know that you actually have multiple entitlements to the game. Ah, uh, yeah. We are the only platform. PlayStation started to following them, but not to the same degree, obviously. Uh, they're like, yeah, <laughs> Spider-Man. <laughs> uh, not going to be day one, understandably. They, you know, Sony is not in the position. Uh, they, If they can, if they want to, but they know they're going to lose a lot, uh, right? Because... Uh, PlayStation is like one of their biggest uh, bread and butter. They make a lot of money with PlayStation, right? Uh, with the games. Not the hardware necessarily, but with the subscriptions, PlayStation Plus, and man, as a brown man, I gotta say, man, we need online, man. We need free online, bro. Like the video if you agree. Like the stream if you agree. Subscribe if you agree. <laughs> what in the comments if you agree, man. Uh, wh what'd you say when you say get more? Uh, no, get mama, get mama, get mama, get, get, get mama. That's a uh, slang. Games. I think that's a, a technology I'd love to see applied to more platforms. Um, but it is this view that people are going to play Xbox in multiple places. Um, mm -hmm. Whether it's play the games you want with the people you want, anywhere you want. Yeah. Whether yeah. it's content community and cloud, whether yeah. it's when everybody plays, we all win. Like we've had different taglines, different strategy uh, kind of words that we've used, but always with this view that Xbox want, is a platform for creators who want to reach the most players. Mm -hmm. um, our investments mm -hmm. in xCloud, our investments yeah. in franchises like Minecraft and now Call of Duty. And Boom! Boom Boca. Yeah. Call of Duty became our first party title, guys! <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, man. Holy crap. And he mentioned xCloud, though. Uh, there are rumors right now, my brothers and sisters, everybody in between, there are rumors that, uh, you know, the next console, I hope he clears up, and talks about it that the next gen xbox 2026 that's when it's coming out and it's gonna be x uh streaming only though yay yeah. i i don't i mean i believe in the future that in the future we're gonna be streaming only like even for playstation probably uh, i can see xbox doing that first because it's microsoft and they have the services playstation probably gonna follow them but not in the near future like 5 10 20 years from now I mean, nobody can predict the future, absolutely, but l guys, let's be real, right? I think you see this coming too. Hand on top of this bottle of water, okay? Let, let, let's, let's agree uh, that uh, in the future, most consoles are gonna be digital. We might not even have a console like in 30 years from now. And it's just like in your smart monitor, you pay subscription, like let's just say Game Pass. PlayStation got like some other pass. PlayStation, maybe they're just gonna keep it PlayStation Plus and you get all the games there, right? Or you're gonna like buy games uh, 
Uh, yeah, you'll exactly revive Gu uh, Gus. You'll own nothing and be happy. Exactly, bro. Exactly. I, I see that happening. I, I, I know this is going to be a crazy thought and most of you are probably going to disagree, but I see the same happening with PlayStation. Like I said, though, I see Xbox doing it faster and much more... Uh, uh, I see them doing it in the near future. I see them doing it first instead of PlayStation. I think PlayStation is gonna do it eventually, but probably not in the beginning, just because their market cap, uh, in simple terms, they're not as rich as Microsoft. Microsoft, three trillion dollars. PlayStation, or I should say Sony as a whole, is over a hundred billion. Now, hundred billion is a hundred billion though. That's a lot of money, I agree. But in comparison to Microsoft, they're just a small fish though. They're like the Nemo. Uh, versus <laughs> Phil, uh, Microsoft, they are a whale. They are a whale. Uh, I got, I got a joke. Why is, uh, uh, I got a joke. Why is an, why is Xbox a pirate's favorite gaming console? I, I see what you did right there. Uh, we need online multiplayer to be accessible without a paywall subscription. I absolutely agree. I know the PC masters would be like, get a PC, dummy. Uh, I have a good PC, uh, personally, but I still prefer gaming on console, sadly. I've been playing Microsoft Flight Simulator on PC, I love it, but damn man, even as somebody that has RTX 3090, the game frames lag, and guess what, I'm playing on 10, 1080p, bro. <laughs> like, holy crap, I get that game is like high, GPU intensive, but you, like, shit man, like, what are we talking about? RTX 3090, that's like, I, I know now we got RTX 4090, but, but still though, like, you gotta give RTX 3090 some credit though. Guys, like, the game stutters. And I'm not playing on max settings. Uh, admittedly, I have like ultra settings on all, but then there's like a slider where you can get most amount of details from 0% to 400. And I set it to like, like, uh, last time I checked 85%. I've been toying around 85 and 105%. 100 means 1080p, 400 mean 4K, right? So I've been toying around and the game lags. It plays beautifully, don't get me wrong, but it's like, here and there, when I get closer to the ground and I'm flying my plane, it lags. Like, holy shit, RTX 3090 here. We're talking about, I got 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Not DDR5. Before you're like, you need DDR5. I got DDR4. DDR4? Like, that's still an alien technology. That shit's good, my guy. You agree or you disagree? Should it lag? Should my <laughs> flight simulator, should it lag? One, if it should lag. Two, if it should not. I believe it should not lag at 1080p. 60 FPS, come on, man. In other large franchises so that we learn how to build those. This has been a strategy that we've been on for, I'd say, a decade. Uh, it's not about one device. It's not about games in service of a device, but rather the devices that people want to play on should be in service of making the games as big and popular as they possibly could be. Because really a healthy creator community on Xbox, a healthy creator community in gaming all up, is the mm. thing that all of us as game players should be voting for because that's the thing that will lead to the best long-term success and growth in this industry. And my understanding just from listening and learning from you three um, over the past few weeks, just understanding what's happening with Xbox is that we see trends with player behavior where people are playing on multiple devices. Mm -hmm. That is the reality. And we have put some games out on multiple uh, platforms before. So my understanding is that that's been good for players. How does that come back to the business with all of yeah. that in mind? Yeah, as you said, we have shipped games on other platforms. In fact, re realistically, if you look with the addition of Activision and Blizzard yeah. and Zenimax. I was going to say, like, technically, though, Call of Duty is now no longer a third party title. It's like a first party Xbox exclusive, which is going to be on PlayStation. So technically, they're going to be shipping Call of Duty on PlayStation Bumbaka. for at least 10 years. Uh, I believe that's the deal, right? After that they can change if they want to probably not gonna i guess but in the next 10 years nobody knows right nobody knows but holy shit man uh, and during their earnings call uh in like february this month right like just two weeks ago i believe i streamed it on the channel and they were microsoft was talking about that now activision brings 50 percent of the entire xbox revenue holy shit right it, I, I'm assuming that they have not made their 70 billion. They're probably not gonna for like a little bit, but eventually they're gonna. Eventually they're gonna, right? Like, uh, goddamn, man. 50% <laughs> of Xbox revenue is coming from Activision. Damn. Max, 
We're one of the largest game publishers on PlayStation. We're one See? of the largest publishers on the Nintendo Switch, especially when you put Minecraft into the equation as well. And now we're one of the largest publishers yep. um, on mobile platforms as yep, well. Yep, yep. And that's not something that we want to back away from. We want to continue. Why is Xbox Pirates' favorite console? Because X marks the spot. Okay, I see, I see. You need to be building <laughs> see, great bro. games that millions and millions of people can love uh, and that they can play those games where they want to go uh -huh. play. Uh -huh. um, but we do understand the business success that Xbox has to have. Um, us as leaders in this business, um, the system today, the system that all companies that we play video games from is a world of you got to be growing your business. Yeah. Um, growth in our Xbox business is critical to the long term health of Xbox. Okay. Many people know I've been on Xbox for over 20 years and I want to make sure Xbox is in the best position for the next 20 years. That wow. means healthy player community, healthy creator community and healthy business. So when we look at opportunities to allow... Do you believe what Phil is saying is uh, gospel right now? One if yes, two, two if nay. I want to know like why everybody's thinking uh, live. Same here, console gaming is a flawless experience. Mostly PC stutters is a bane of gaming. I don't want to spend three grand just for gaming. I feel you. Most people feel the same way, right? Obviously, I do YouTube uh, and I, I'm trying to make sure like I have the best processor and... Uh, uh, a GPU right so I can render videos faster make videos uh, faster and I I don't want my PC shutting down while I'm recording right it happened once though but like okay I hope it never happens touch uh, uh, touch wood because uh, yeah but but you feel what I'm saying right that's the reason but most general the general audience don't want to spend three grand and I know some PC master is sitting would be like you do not need to spend three grand and they are right in a way you don't need to spend three grand but like listen man if you want to have the same specs uh, as some, uh, for example, like PlayStation, uh, I believe PlayStation got like RTX, the equivalent, the equivalent, it does not, but the equivalent is of RTX 2080. I heard that Xbox Series X got 12 teraflops and it's like the equivalent of RTX 2080 Ti. Back in 2020, we were getting these comparisons and we were talking about this and everybody was talking about it. It's like 2080 Ti, 2080 equivalent of it, not like literally, but the equivalent. Uh, and like at that time, and if you wanted to get like a good PC with the good processor, uh, almost like the same amount of pro uh, processing power, yeah, man, you you were, you were gonna spend a lot of money, especially if you're in, let's just say like another country, if you're not in the US, easily, bro, easily. Uh, like you said, you're in Pakistan, so I believe like taxes, uh, shipping cost, uh, manufacturing, obviously different prices. Like, yeah, right. Like on a on a different planet, like it's different. I, I'm in Canada, so the do USD to Canadian dollar, big difference. So easily, like I spent five grand on my PC, this PC, oh, shit. and that was uh, five years ago when I bought it. So right now, inflation, and at that time I didn't have RTX 3090, right? So I spent like I saved my money for like I remember two years, and I was like, I'm gonna buy a PC. Hold it, hold it. Uh, I. I, I, my last PC that I had, right? Uh, I, I I tried to juice it out, man. I juice it to the max, right? I'm like, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that sucker live one more. And, and it, it was it was dying, bro. It was dying. It was dying. It was dying. I made sure to uh, pump in some energy uh, and kept it a little bit longer. But it was time to go, man. And then I bought it this PC five years ago, running just fine. But over the years, I I uh, uh, I, I kind of. Upgraded. Uh, bye for now. 2 a.m. here in Pakistan. Gotta sleep if I was a Gary Stevens session. I appreciate you saying Allah Hafiz, man. Allah Hafiz, and uh, th uh, appreciate you uh, dropping in, my brother. See you in the next one. Bye, John. Uh, I got you, GDD. Uh, more Shout people you, to man. play, more people engage, more people to buy, more people to subscribe. It's all about putting Xbox in the best position. And our hardware is a critical component of that. The absolute best experience somebody has on Xbox is hardware that yeah. your team builds mm -hmm. um, and that people play on. But that's not going to be everybody. We fully accepted that we're going to have Xbox players across all kinds of devices. So I think a lot of people think about 2023 as this incredible year for gaming. And in a lot of ways, it was. There was some really... Cap! Some, I mean, some decent games, are, let's be real. Gaming is going to die. I got to show you guys this, okay? Holy crap, okay? The replies are kind of saucy right now, though. Uh, hopefully there's no Bob's Bagana here, then I would have to <laughs> shut down everything here. Uh, it happened once to me uh, a long time ago. I hopefully, hopefully it's not gonna happen. So Xbox is keeping our promise you bring more games. Yeah, that's what uh, Xbox is saying. Probably Papa Phil is saying that. 
not on his uh, personal account, but like, yeah, damn. And it was a good 20, 20 plus year. That's all, folks. I love Xbox and the vision of Xbox for the future. Huge W will continue to play on Xbox, PC, and Cloud. Leaked Xbox game going multi platform Redfall, Redfall Integrate, Redfall Directors Cut, and Redfall 2. <laughs> if that happens, that would be crazy. Have people in the comments even read the thread? Yes, yeah, things are like uh, sauce ended up. I mean, the news, honestly, though, it is not as doomsday the heavy right like everybody was getting ready for a doomsday it's not doomsday heavy today but really amazing releases that i think we all not enjoyed but what were the signals behind the scenes that maybe indicated how we wanted to look at the future of xbox and how we kind of keep up with the industry uh -huh. yeah such a good question and i think it's as people who oh care about God. the industry which i assume is people who are watching this it was an amazing year some great launches some of the games that i think will stand the test of time and people will be talking about a decade from now but it's an industry that didn't really grow. Mm. And what happens when an industry doesn't grow? Um, it does. You end up with some job eliminations, which we had. We had Yo. even our own hard decisions to make about building a sustainable. Yo, that's insane, right? Come on, I, I get it that Xbox division is different from let's just say Microsoft, but like, holy shit, man. Microsoft is a $3 trillion company. And you're telling me, I mean, I don't, I mean, Phil is in charge, but the it's not that, I'm assuming that the orders came from the the uh, his highness or something like that, right? The order the order came from the top and he had to like fire, but like it does not sound good in the public eye, right? Because he did say that when we acquire Activision, we're gonna be very good to the dish. We're gonna make a good friendly environment, and guess what? They acquire Xbox or Xbox acquires Activision, and he fired 1,900 devs. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you fired 1900 devs after promising and saying that we're gonna make a healthy environment for the devs. You know what I'm saying? Jose, I see you, man. I, I see you, but that's gaming right now. So, why, 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 okay. I, I see you, man, but don't spam too much. You can spam, it's fine, but don't spam. Let me send you some quiches, man. Hopefully, now uh, you got that dopamine. Full on Homer right there. Uh, uh, Gears ain't coming to PS5. She, uh, I mean, uh, did they confirm? They have not confirmed that. The only thing they confirm is that we're not getting Starfield and uh, we're not getting uh, Indiana Jones Day 1 on... I, I believe we're not getting it at all on PlayStation. So, I mean, Xbox fanboys would be like, Thank God! Thank God right now! Thank God! Uh, Damn, Mofos better be, uh, bring Forza uh, to PlayStation 5. He says four games, so let's see what they're gonna be. Maybe Halo, maybe Forza. We'll see, man. I'm, I'm hoping for Microsoft Flight Simulator, to be honest, because I don't want to be playing on PC all day, you know? business for ourselves, but in no way were we alone in that. Um, when you think about a healthy industry, I want players who believe that they will find the best games on the platforms that they love. I want people who invest their careers in working here to feel like this is a place that be, they can be successful. And that really is down to being part of an industry that is growing. If you listen to Lisa Sue, the AMD CEO, she'll say that AMD powered consoles are likely to decline in 2024. I think a, there's an amazing set of games coming in 2024, but if we don't get to the growing cow. as an industry, Cat. the industry will struggle. Mm -hmm. And today there's really two choices on how do you grow the industry? Do you say I have a fixed number of players, the players that we have today, and do I find new ways to monetize those players to get more money from the players that I have? Micro trend. What? Oh shit. What? More money's from the players, Phil? Okay, I must have heard it wrong. And she's like looking at him, she like, uh, Thank you, Phil. You're making the money for us. <laughs> Damn, bro. It, it is always this crazy. I mean, we know they're, uh, let's be real, no shocker, right? It's a corporation after all. They gotta make the money somehow. They gotta nickel and dime the customers, man. Of course, Sony wants to, everybody, we all know that, right? Everybody wanna do it, but like, holy shit, man. Because in my mind, I'm assuming, like, and you probably are too as well. Uh, are you? Let me know in the comments. Micro, it's gonna be microtransaction. Hell, bro. Let's see what, uh, I want to rewind it five seconds. Let's see. Have today, and do I find new ways to monetize those players to get more money from the Boy. players that I have? Or do you think about how do I expand the business I have by finding new players oh, okay. and adding those to the base of players? That okay, it wasn't the bad. It wasn't the bad. It wasn't the bad. It wasn't. Okay. W feel. W feel. But deep down, like, let's be real though. It's microtransaction, like, that's it. We got a nickel and dime over customer base. Like, deep down it's that, but okay, thank God he didn't say that because holy shit, I was gonna, like, lose my mind right there. I think a lot of people would have lost their mind if he, he did not say, but, you know, the but is a beautiful word, though. Literally, 
and also in the English language. Bruh. If you catch my if you catch my drift right there, okay? Butts, amazing, man. I love the love the 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 the, the opposite gender butts, not like you know what I'm saying. Uh, but like, butt is a beautiful word, though. You know, if you feel what I'm saying microtransactions world. It is, it is. I already play. Our focus on Xbox for the last decade has really been on that latter point of how do we make sure Xbox is growing, growing for our players, growing for our creators. So those people are finding success um, on our platform, which will grow the Xbox business and put Xbox in a position to be very strong for years and decades to come. Matt, earlier you were talking about these growing gaming communities, how they're incredibly large. Um, and Matt Boutte, say his name and respect and honor, lady. It's not Matt, it's Matt Boutte. Okay, say it with respect, like you mean it. You know, comparable on such a different level when we think about console audiences. Like you mentioned Roblox, you mentioned Fortnite. So how are we, we're, we're obviously thinking about our responsibility, our hardware responsibility is supporting the growth of gaming communities. How has that actually shown up for the players? Are there game, other games we can speak to from our portfolio? Well, as... Mm, okay, so Super Steve is saying Grounded, Sea of Thieves, Hi-Fi Rush, and Pentiment are the four games. For real? Uh, is it leaked information or like official? I mean, technically, I'm expecting high fire rush, but the rest is like Sea of Thieves. Uh, I heard mixed responses. I feel like that people love it. I, I don't know. High fire rush. Oh yeah, people loved it. People love high fire rush. Uh, oh yeah. I mean, that's a um, all right list. I mean, nothing really too crazy. I, yeah, the, the 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 rumors were doomsday though, and a lot of people, a lot of Xbox fanboys lost their shit. Sony people are doing helicopters with their release. I feel like that after this news, everybody's gonna settle down. But still, I believe that some Xbox fanboys are gonna murder Sony ponies right now. <laughs> that left, right? Uh, it, the reaction was insane last week. The news today, I mean, it's all right, right? Do you feel like that the news is negative? I don't view that. I don't feel that way. I feel like that the Xbox news that's coming out, that's pretty good. That's, that's pretty decent. They're gonna put some games, gonna make profit, and it's not like doomsday heavy though. Like shit, man, because uh, a lot of people made it like really, really doomsday last week. As Phil mentioned, I mean, two of the biggest ones for us, Call of Duty and Minecraft, I mean, they are driven just from the bottom up by the communities of people that play those games, um, which is so great. I think. Think about it for the player community it comes down to where are the friends where are the people uh -huh. you play with and then equally important is where have you built up your library of games right where's yeah. the where have you invested where's that library i think those two things probably are some of the biggest influences on where people choose to play and what devices yeah. they Absolutely. choose to play yeah when we think about on the other side the developer side just any game developer wants their game to find the biggest audience possible. That's just the, the nature of building a game. You want people to enjoy and participate in what you've made. And I think we're in a unique position to deliver on that just because we are the platform. We build hardware, we've got a first party games group, and then we've got a system that ties that together, that brings together your friends, your progression, your achievements, all of that. And I, I think that's really what has contributed to the momentum behind some of these communities. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you look at, just step back and you look at the history of the industry, we've moved from a place where it used to be that someone built and launched a game to accelerate hardware to actually the things we do with our hardware and with our platform are all in service of making uh, connect all this online i don't want to hit anybody up with the ptsd it was good you still it's what's good man uh will skill based matching and ever i don't know about that i feel like that we everybody if you hate skill based matching i feel like that uh if everybody talks about and uh, i mean phil knows it he's not dumb though he knows it, that Sekis don't want skill based matchmaking in. But I feel like that a lot of people should add him. And I mean, I mean, there's a 50 50 chance maybe he's gonna listen and eventually remove it. I think at the end of the day, it's like Activision's call still whether to have it or not. And I think they, they wanna have it. Like, I mean, they put out a statement, they literally said that whenever we removed it or tried to remo remove it and we ran tests, but that was a bullshit post. Like, let's be real, they lied a lot in that post. Uh, we talked about it, don't wanna dive into it because we're gonna be here for another hour if we do, right? With, with, with the patterns and shit, whatever they were saying in that was going against their publicly and officially filed pattern. 
right? Now, pattern doesn't mean everything uh, that's mentioned is in the game, but let's be real. It's backed up by d data uh, and a lot of uh, independent studies that were done when it was coming out, uh, right? So skill based matching is a real goddamn deal. Uh, and they literally said that, well, if you remove it, well, uh, people don't play the game as much. So basically, it's not leaving anytime soon. Skill based matchmaking is not gonna go away though. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, but there's a 50 50 chance if people complain about it and talk about it, maybe Uncle Phil is gonna do something. Likely not, but I mean, it's a 50 50 chance, right? I would say, like, let's take the 50% chance that it might, but people gotta, like, add Phil Spencer respectfully, respectfully, and talk about uh, removing it. Are we going to talk about GTA 6? I've grown up. We, we talk. We can, uh, technically. We can. We talked about it before. I've grown up with PlayStation and Xbox. Uh, Xbox and Xbox ten times better. I don't like PlayStation at all. Sony stuff. Okay. I mean, that's your opinion. That's your opinion. That's uh, okay. Uh, fair. Activision without Call of Duty is like masturbating with no motion. Lol. Uh, okay. I mean, don't 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 empty the cold gate, my G. Don't empty. GTA 6 confirmed. Cancel. GTA 5 2024 edition coming. Nah. They technically cancel a lot of the DLC. Jose, come on, man. You can say something else too, brother. Come on, man. Like we all disappointed in you right now. Oh, bro, you spamming the same damn thing. I get it. It's like, zzz, zzz. but you can spam it. Don't worry, man. A lot of us uh, YouTubers would ban you for spamming. I would, but spam it, but not like this, okay? You can spam it. Anybody, all of you can spam my chat. I give you the right. Spam it like five times, but not like 20 times, though. Like, I appreciate you subscribing, man. Thank you, brother. Love y'all for 230 likes. Love y'all, man. Those games bigger. And we think about that across all of the investments we make, the consoles we build, the investments we do with things like cross-play, cross-progression, the things that we're doing with cloud. How do we actually give more options to game creators so they can have the greatest success? I think one of the, the yeah. fun recent examples about this is actually Power World. You know, Power uh -huh. World was able to launch, they were a game preview, they launched in Game Pass, they also simultaneously launched in Steam. And through the combination of those things, you know, Pocket Pair was able to have this outsized success, Amazing. and it was the largest third-party Game Pass launch ever. And that's mm. all because we give creators options on how they can launch their games. We've got subscription, we've got retail, we've got free-to-play, we've got game preview, we have the consoles, we have our experience on PC, and they can access all of those things. And when we step back and we just look at the performance of our platform all up, we know it's working. We're yeah. at the highest level of users on console, the highest level of users on PC, the highest level of users on cloud ever. We have double digit growth rate on PC and cloud, places where we're enabling creators to actually reach new players beyond the console ecosystem. And that's why we're leaning into it and doing more because we see all those signals. So we're talking about the role that hardware plays for creators, for the mm -hmm. games and those communities. What about the role that hardware plays for us Yay. as a business for Xbox? Yeah, this is the one, man. I hope he talks about it because there are also a lot of rumors that apparently the next Xbox is going to be streaming only, though. Oh, shit. I think realistically, I can see that like we were talking about earlier. I can see that happen in the future, future, like 10, 20 years like that. I don't think the next, 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 next uh, is going to be like dead ass, but rumors are flying. I hope he talks about it. When we look at our hardware, it really is, and Phil said this every, earlier, it's where you get like the most flagship seminal experience of Xbox. Okay, and it definitely. also represents a developer target. Our developers can build the specs of our hardware, and we invest to make sure they know when they do that, that the games are going to grow great on our hardware, but they're also going to be able to be accessed across any stream, any mm. screen because of all the other investments we make. So we're giving them an easy way to access as many players as possible. And we actually have more creators right now building for Xbox than ever before thousands. by nature, yeah. thousands of them by nature of those investments. I mean, let's be real. Y'all suckers bought everybody. <laughs> Y'all suckers bought everybody, though. Uh, chronically happy coming in with 269 pennies. <laughs> Shout out to you, girl. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the 269 pennies right there. Uh, Jose is sending uh, pissing sounds. Okay. They still think these are good things for the industry. I heard a rumor that the next uh, console will still be hybrid, but we won't know till it's time. Yeah. Like, uh, um, there are also rumors that the next PlayStation 5 Pro will also come in digital and physical, right? The uh, And PS5 Pro is going to digital, I believe, I heard. I might make a video, but I need more research. And once I have, I'll, uh, I'll I, I might make a video. But roughly, the rumors that are going around is that the next uh, PS5 Pro Digital Edition 
will be like $500. I guess the physical will probably like $550, $600-ish. Uh, that's PS5 Pro. I mean, price sounds kind of decent, fair. Uh, I guess everybody kind of expected that. But still, though, $500, sheesh, that's that's a, that's a rich, man. I uh, I wish I could go to China right now and get uh, get me a PS5 Pro, uh, Pro for two pennies, bro. Like the video if you agree with that, man. They should actually cut the cost, man. $500, that's crazy, though. Uh, but realistically, I mean, we all, I guess uh, that's a decent price. I, I believe PS5 normal when it came out in 2020 was also 500 was it 400 or 500 now i'm kind of mistaken though yeah was it no i think it was 500 i think xbox series x and ps5 both were 500 450 was digital for yeah sony listen man xbox and microsoft both of them want to go digital but they cannot do it because they know they're gonna catch a lot of heat and suckers would absolutely hate it and rightfully so everybody would be up in arms so this is why they're testing it right they're like hey digital for the for the for the for the, for the for the junkies out there and physical for people for the sickers out here that love uh, physical copies right i think they're, they want to do both right now but eventually they're gonna do only one and that's gonna be digital only though and we got more to come there's some exciting stuff coming out in hardware that we're gonna share this holiday and we're also invested in the next generation roadmap and what we're really focused on there is delivering the largest technical leap you will have ever seen in a hardware generation which makes it better for players and better for creators and the visions that they're building. And then when we're talking about hardware too, there's these other considerations that are really important to our community, yeah, probably yeah, 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 to yeah. each one of ourselves as well. Yeah, yeah, when, we, yeah. when you talk about library, because I want to dig in on that yeah. a little bit more, yeah. you know, as we talk about cloud in the wider entertainment industry, there's conversations about streaming. How is yeah, that yeah, yeah. impacting how I own my Yep, yep, yep. I think the re okay, I'm already assuming they're gonna deny those rumors and they're gonna confirm it, and that's good. The reason I'm assuming this is because let's be real, they heard the rumors and they were half true. I think this rumor is false, false because they're gonna talk about it. Had it been the rumor was real, they're never gonna talk about it because they're gonna catch a lot of flag. So I'm I'm assuming we're gonna get good news right now. Whether that's true or not remains to be seen, right? Whether you wanna believe it or not, that's up to your discretion, that's up to you. Okay, that's fair. But I'm assuming we better hit some, we better hear some good news. And he said next gen Xbox roadmap. So I, I'm assuming they're this year, this year. So I think later this year they're gonna talk about the next gen Xbox. Maybe that's like truly next gen Xbox or like you know a mid gen refresh like PS5 Pro because we're getting PS5 Pro by the end of this year. Uh, and rumor has it that the next gen Xbox is gonna be in 2026. So. I think if they talk about next gen, I mean, they literally said next gen hardware roadmap, they're going to give us that by the end of this year. I think uh, they're going to talk about the next gen Xbox by the end of this year. And I think it makes sense, right? Because 2026 is like what? By the end of the, like, it's in two years from now. Oh shit! Oh, Holy shit! shit. And I'm assuming the next-gen Xbox is going to come out by the end of 2026, so it only makes sense for them to talk about it, confirm it officially by the end of this year. That's going to give them two years to hype it up, market it, I think, yeah, man, time flies like crazy. Like, holy shit, guys. For Xbox, we're more than halfway through. For the next PlayStation, PlayStation 6, we're hearing PlayStation 6 is going to come out 2027, 2028-ish. For PS5, we're halfway through the life cycle. Holy shit. Think about this way. What games do we have? Right? This generation feels so lame, man. In comparison to PS3, 360, Xbox One, and PS4, right? Xbox One, I mean, listen, it wasn't that good of a console, but I'm talking about, like, games that we had during the lifespan of that. 360, PS3, hands down the best era, best consoles. I would say uh, I always played on PS3, free online, loved it, but Xbox 360 was a superior hardware versus PS3, right? Uh, there were up positives and negatives, sure, but, like, uh, 360 was a, a better console back then. But after that, Xbox started taking L's, especially with the Xbox uh, One. With Series X, they started to make a little bit of comeback. And but yeah, man, this con this uh, console generation feels so light, man. It's insane content that I've invested in. So, what can we say about our stance around game preservation? Yeah, you know, one of the highlights for me of, of being in this position was getting to stand on stage when we announced back compat coming to Xbox One, like it was fantastic. People were reading the teleprompter before I could read it, <laughs> I'm a slow reader, um, and just feeling the energy in the in the, uh, in the the auditorium mm -hmm. as we were saying that, and online. You know, one of the cues I think us as being part of Microsoft take is looking at Windows and mm -hmm. how Windows over decades has 
maintained software compatibility with things that are built on it. Like I can still go back and play some of the games that I love playing on Windows from decades ago and it will still run. And we try to bring that same view to consoles. It's harder in console because the line between what the hardware is and what the game is in consoles okay. is traditionally, it's, it's tighter, which uh -huh. makes compatibility, you end up doing these generational compatibilities that we've built. But I will say compatibility, the ability to not only play the games, but my saves are still there with our cloud save systems mm -hmm. yeah. to try to keep the services up as long as we can so that people can play is a tenant of what we are as Xbox. It's at our foundation. And when we look at future hardware generations and what we're going to support, making sure that we respect, which is the word I use, respect the investments that people have made in Xbox going forward is fundamental. And the fact that you get entitlements when you buy a game from us on both Windows and Xbox. Yeah, we've got to respect the investors, right? If gamers can go pound sand. But um, I, I honestly, though, like if they if they were to bring like Windows, uh, like in the next Xbox, holy shit, that would be amazing though. You know, the next day an Xbox comes out, because consoles are literally computers, they are. Without the Windows software installed in it. Technically, they have like a different version. We, we can argument, we can go back and forth, we can discuss this, but like, if the next Xbox, like, deadass got like Windows 11 in it, holy shit, that would be insane. That Then they would have another incentive. Uh, they would have a really good incentive uh, uh, for making their customers feel kind of exclusive when they when they get Xbox. It's like, you don't have the money to uh, buy like a $3,000 computer that comes with almost the same specs as a, a next-gen Xbox console. Why not buy this Xbox for $500 instead, right? You know what I mean, Silo? Did you see the Deadpool 3 teaser? Uh, I haven't had the time, man. Uh, but I saw it on... I saw that they announced it on Twitter, but I have not seen the full trailer yet. Was it good? Also means you have the ability to play that game um, across a multitude of devices, which I think furthers the compatibility of the games that you mm -hmm. own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can we go mm -hmm. back to what Xbox stands for today? I think we've pretty much covered all of the elements, but if you could break it down for me. You know, when you play on Xbox, what we're saying is, is you're playing on a platform where you know the biggest games in the world are always going to be. You're playing on a platform where you get to access Game Pass. And all of the games from our incredible range of studios will always launch in Game Pass day one. And you're playing on a platform that's dedicated to you, like player first features, cross play, cross save. I, I did that on the first part there, okay? Uh, I, I, I like, uh, like you guys know, and I'm gonna reiterate it Game Pass. Game Pass is a good model. I, I like Game Pass, okay? Game Pass is good, okay? If, yeah, you pay little money and you get a, a lot of games in that. Yeah, good. Uh, but the first part was capped, lady. Come on, stop capping, lady. Lamau, oh, by a schizole. Yeah, oh, hell yeah, physical, Super Steve. And Ricardo's, uh, I'm always physical till I die. But sadly, though, sadly, don't hate me. Don't hate me for this one. Don't hate me. But because I'm doing YouTube, if I want to stream a game, I got to get it digital because I want to preload and play day one, you know? Oh, shit! Oh, Sometimes hours before so I can stream. That's just for YouTube. I talked about it before and I'll say it again. If I wasn't doing YouTube, I would always buy physical because you have a little bit of security. Not fully, though. A little bit because you can always, in a way, return it. Not necessarily, but like you can sell it, exchange it, or, you know, sell it on the Facebook Marketplace too. Uh, you know, you have a little bit of security in that way. Uh, but but with, with digital, you play a little bit on PlayStation, you say goodbye to your money. You cannot get a refund on Steam, two hours. Okay, better than nothing for sure. But like, damn, that's like digital. You'll be, ha you'll own nothing but be happy essentially. Cross progression. Uh, backwards and if they turn off the servers, you'll own nothing but be happy. It's compatibility. Uh, being able to play your games in your library anywhere you want because of the investments that we make in cloud gaming. And so you're playing somewhere where you're investing and you know you get to take the games forward with you and across all of the screens where you are. And I think most importantly, Xbox is a place where you know when you're investing in Xbox, you're investing somewhere that is dedicated to making games more successful and creators more successful so that they can invest more to bring even better experiences to you all of the time. Yeah, just that investment in the studios is, is so, and we feel that mm -hmm. as part of First Party with the platform proximity. You know, it's um, kind of amazing now to look out across all the studios we've got and just be reminded that we're now one of the biggest development yeah. organizations in the industry. What does that mean for players? 
it means that the biggest games are going to continue to come to Xbox. And Stop the cap. I mean, in a way, he's right because, like, y'all suckers bought everybody. <laughs> y'all bought everybody. Yeah, and listen, man, as much as, you know, suckers hate Call of Duty and we talk and we crap on it, I mean, I would not. Okay. You know, five, ten years ago, if you were complaining about Call of Duty, you would be considered toxic, I guess, in this day and age. It's kind of cool. But it's cool because it's true, right? Call of Duty has gone down the toilet. But. Let's be real though, it's the biggest game on the planet though! Suckers love it, suckers buy it! Uh, the only games that beat it are Rockstar games, right? Uh, and then Call of Duty turned out to be number two. Wow, right, number two. I mean, number two is still dang good though. You know, they sell millions and millions of copies. Hogwarts Legacy beat it. We heard, we heard they, they beat uh, the, the last Call of Duty, which is amazing, man. I'm glad somebody was able to, that's not Rockstar. Uh, but let's be real, they're gonna have Call of Duty. They're gonna have the biggest game in that way. They bought it, they bought the Call of Duty. And Call of Duty, I, I hope it comes out on Game Pass, honestly. That would be amazing, that would be amazing. Call of Duty 2024, uh, overall, I'm positive with it. The reason being, it's Treyarch. And also, it's like, we're hearing by the time it comes out, it's gonna be in development for four years. Uh, I think this is gonna be the first Call of Duty game in development for four years straight. Uh, but surely, like, they had Treyarch devs working on Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, so they cut their some of their time. But I, I truly hope Call of Duty 2024 turns out to be good, though. I'm keen, I'm overall optimistic, but, but I'm ready to not buy that game if it turns out to be crap, just like how I did not buy Modern Warfare 3, even though I could have made a lot more money, because I'm doing YouTube, I could have bought it, I could have made a lot more money, could have been a tax write-off, but I said like, mm, mm like not for me though. You know, Modern Warfare 3, like, you know, I'm like really, really burnt out on COD, and also COD is not good. But I've been playing like Black Ops Cold War, Newtown 24-7, and I love it. It's not that I'm burnt out on Call of Duty, it's just that the games aren't that good. Uh, Call of Duty 2024, yeah, we heard the rumor that it, the campaign is gonna be open world. I'm not sure I'm like 50-50 with that. Modern Warfare 3 campaign in a way was open world. When they say open world, I with Modern Warfare 3, it's true. It's like they put war zone <laughs> missions and called it a campaign. I hope COD 2024 is not just war zone rehash. I really hope. Rumors has rumors are saying it's not gonna be. It's gonna be unique and gonna be built from the ground up. Not sure how much of that is true. We're gonna find out. Overall, I'm keen. One, if you're keen for COD 2024. Two, if you're not. And uh, this 2024, the year coming up, we've got more than 10 major releases coming up. Great stuff, Hellblade 2, we've got Diablo expansion, hey. we've got Avowed, Ara, the uh, Indiana Jones game, mm -hmm. and Five? there's more in development, which uh -huh. uh, I think we're going to be able to share more about at our June showcase coming up soon. Well, I guess I there should get are. ready to work on that <laughs> show. Damn! So June showcase confirmed, E3 is not happening this year. Uh, we're probably gonna have Summer Game Fest on Xbox, PlayStation, they're gonna do their show. Rumors saying that the next PlayStation Showcase will be in May, but I would not be surprised if it happens in September, like the last two years, I believe, right? Okay, damn! Next, X next gen Xbox, okay, what we learned? Four games coming on PlayStation, not sure which one, Starfield and Indiana Jones not coming, E3 did, June showcase confirmed by yours truly, uh, Matt Boutte and Sarah and uh, Phil Spencer. I forgot the last chick name. Uh, I believe this is Sarah. I forgot her name though. Uh, and, and, and next on Xbox information by the end of this year. Okay, not bad, not bad, guys. Recently we had a ton of drama though with Doctor Dis Dis Dis. Respect, respect, respect. Nick Marks, Tim the Tatman. Click on this video on the screen, and I will see you right there. Check it out, brothers.